Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Greeted by protest signs and a rebuke from the Archdiocese, President Trump visited the St. John Paul II Shrine in Washington, D.C. today after threatening to deploy the military to quash a week of unrest and protests over the death of George Floyd. Among those appealing for calm, former Vice President Joe Biden, speaking in Philadelphia. He called it a wake-up call for the nation and declared that, quote, no president should quiet our voice. Let's go live now to our Washington correspondent, Siobhan Kennedy. Well, John, I am standing here outside the White House. You can see a crowd of several hundred protesters is gathered here behind me. They're holding banners. They are currently, as we stand here, crying out the name of George Floyd. They're kneeling down in, on one knee in, in his memory. I think you can see there very clearly in front of them a new long black fence that has been erected unbelievably overnight by the White House. Symbolic really of the moment and of the president's speech overnight, which wasn't in any way open and inclusive, reaching out to the people in a way of healing. It was instead a threat really. He threatened a federal crackdown on cities and states that didn't immediately bring an end to some of the violence that we've seen across America in the past week or so. And of course, those images that we've now all seen, he did exactly that last night on a crowd of peaceful protesters half an hour before the curfew, even as he simultaneously reached out to his base, his supporters, and reassured them that he would defend their right to bear arms, which many saw as exactly that, a call to arms by the president. This was vintage President Trump in an election year. He wants to be seen as strong and tough. The president, as he called himself, of law and order, Joe Biden, the presumptive Democratic nominee today, has said that President Trump is part of the problem, he says, consumed with his blinding ego, he described it. But the images, really, of the protesters fleeing last night, a barrage of rubber bullets and tear gas, aside from the president's words that he wants them to remember, those images may well be the thing that everybody here remembers the most. After seven days when violence has ripped through the heart of America, the president finally addressed the nation, a moment they hoped for calm and unity. I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful protesters. And yet moments before he spoke, a couple of hundred yards from where he stood on the podium, the White House let forth a phalanx of troops, secret service and mounted police, who, without warning, unleashed a barrage of stun grenades, tear gas and rubber bullets on the crowd of peaceful protesters. As they fled, in a split-screen moment synonymous with his presidency, this is how the scene played out on national television. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. With the streets cleared out, the president, smarting from criticisms that he'd hid in his bunker as America burned, strode out, stepping across the debris and framed by angry graffiti for this staged photo op in front of the president's church. It was lost on no one that he was flanked by white people after a speech where he mentioned the death of George Floyd but said nothing of how he would heal a fractured, angry nation. Later, the Episcopal Bishop of Washington, who presides over the church, said she was given no warning of the president's stunt. He was using our church as a backdrop and the Bible as a prop in ways that I found to be um, deeply offensive. And he was doing so the same day that Terence Floyd visited the site of his brother's death and called for peace. Do this peacefully, please. If I'm not over here blowing up stuff, if I'm not over here messing up my community, then what are y'all doing? But across the country, the rage continued. In New York, looters ransacked the famous Macy's department store. 
while police officers were injured by gunfire in Missouri and Las Vegas. Two people were killed in Chicago. There was one moment of calm when the police chief in New York, where officers are being investigated for brutal tactics against protesters, fell to his knee in respect for George Floyd and embraced a young black man. But in Washington, military helicopters circled menacingly overhead as streets near the White House were blocked off one by one and protesters forced back. People keep getting killed and nobody held accountable. Nobody's held accountable. That's, that's what it is, plain and simple. Do you feel that you need to hear from your president? Do you think that he's risen to this crisis? The principle here that you need to be focused on is Black Lives Matter. You need to be more compassionate. If you're supposed to be my president, then do something. I do not feel safe in America. He's, he's threatening the people. He's threatening the people he's supposed to represent and he's supposed to protect. Has the president done anything in your view to help this situation? No. <laughs> As evening fell, the Attorney General, William Barr, whose Justice Department helped oversee the crackdown, left the White House. As did Mark Esper, the Defense Secretary, who stopped to talk to military personnel. Are you happy with the results of the crackdown this evening? Was the use of tear gas on the crowd outside the White House wholly necessary this evening? Are you happy with the results of the crackdown this evening? The lights are on. The President of Law and Order may feel safer. But does the rest of America? Well, we're now joined from Arlington, Virginia, by Paris Dennard, a, a conservative commentator who's worked for George W. Bush in the White House and has been named the spokesperson for black voices for Trump for the 2020 re-election campaign. And from Washington, D.C., the lawyer Roy Austin, who was Deputy Assistant Attorney General at the U.S. Department of Justice under President Obama. He later worked for the White House. Uh, can we just ask you, first of all, um, Paris Dennard, what does it say of President Trump that he's become the first president in more than three decades to have to consider bringing the army onto the streets of America? Well, first of all, I want to say that package was the biggest piece of leftist propaganda I've ever seen in my life. I think it's just deplorable that your viewers are seeing that and that so total distortion of what's happening. But I will say that President Trump did not want to get to this point of having to ask or, or bring in uh, the, the National Guard because Democrat leaders, mayors and governors did not do what they should have done, which is call in the Guard themselves and get order and prevent the looting, the rioting, the violence, the shootings, the deaths from Antifa, whom the president wants to label a domestic terrorist organization and other outside agitator groups that are destroying, burning down the black community, black small businesses. The president did not want that to happen. That's why he called on the Democrat mayors and governors to act. In America, we have something called federalism. And the governors and the mayors are actually in charge of their own states and cities. And so they have to act to keep the peace. And that is exactly what President Trump was calling on that to happen so that we would not get to a point where black cities in America will be burned down, businesses would be burned down like they were 99 years ago during the Tulsa riot where the black Wall Street was burned away and that ended generational black wealth, black businesses and the black community. The president is standing on the side of I think you've had a pretty good say. I think we'll have to inter is... interrupt. There are other people in the, in the discussion, or one other person. So let, let's move on for a moment, Paris Dennard. I would just point out that our correspondent is actually there and you're not. And that is a rather large uh, difference between the two of you. And I will actually point out that I am from the black community. I will actually point out that I know what's going on in my community. I will actually point out that Arlington, Virginia is not technically Washington, D.C., but it is across the bridge. That's happened where I happen to live. So don't insult me and say just because your reporter happens to be on there has any idea what it means to be black in America, has any idea what it means to go through what we are going through. This country in these black communities are suffering because people like the Democrat governors and mayors stood by and sat there in silence like Joe Biden did from the comforts of his basement in Delaware. Don't offend me. This is serious. We know what's going on in our country. Uh, well, and well this talking of offense, perhaps we could issue. just move on. Roy Austin. Roy Austin, uh, talking of offense, um, how offensive is it to, for the president to have described uh, the people on the streets of uh, New York as low life and losers? 
you know, the president's rhetoric is, is unbelievable. And, and Mr. Denard is clearly on him at this moment because his president is, is flailing and failing uh, in every way imaginable. Uh, from the time he came into office, he has been uh, pouring oil uh, on people, uh, on movements that have been trying to address uh, police misconduct, police misbehavior. Uh, your report that led into this thing was wholly accurate. Look, there are tens of thousands of people who are marching peaceably. There are a few outliers there, and it's unclear who those outliers are. There are mayors and governors, Republican and Democratic, who have called for peace, and yet this president has called for shooting of looters, which makes no sense. He's called for putting dogs on peaceful demonstrators, which makes no sense. And yesterday we all watched as he um, basically used hundreds of uh, National Guardsmen uh, and uh, officers simply for a photo opportunity, which made absolutely no sense whatsoever and, and contradicts everything, everything that people are trying to do. We tried to work with police departments. We tried to work with communities. We tried to work with activists. We were moving the ball forward on these things post-Ferguson and everything we have done is being undone right now. And then to call Arlington, Virginia, Washington, D.C. Uh, just shows how unhinged Mr. Bernard is. Paris, Denard, I find it, um, I find it, do, I find do you, uh, no, may I ask you a question? Uh, no, I wish to ask you a question, please. You may be a lawyer, but I'm going to ask you a question. And the question I want to ask you is, does the president understand the black community? The question I like to ask is, does Joe Biden understand the black community? The question I want to know is, did President Obama understand the black community? Because he didn't do anything for Perhaps us. Perhaps you'd have it the grace to justice. answer my it question. And my question and is, my question is, that. does that the is president, president Trump, understand the black of, community? Because President Trump enacted criminal justice reform, which disproportionately impacted the black community in a positive way. Because President, uh, president Trump gave unprecedented support for historically black colleges and universities. That shows his support for the black community. When the president says, I understand understand. I hear you. The president has people around him that look like me who get what's happening at the at the White House, at the Department of Justice, at, at Housing and Urban, Urban Development. So, yes, he really understands what's going on. That's why he called on the guard and the governors and the mayors to act because he did not want to see black businesses burn. So when President Obama saw black businesses go down after the riot and the looting and the violence after in Baltimore after Freddie Gay, and he called them thugs, he was right to do so because he wasn't talking about the peaceful protest. He was talking about the people who were destro destroying our community. And that is why I'm passionate. That's why I'm upset. I'm upset because people sit by idly and do nothing while black businesses burn to the ground. This is about change. This is about action. And the president Roy Austin, has um, Roy Austin, uh, I must ask you whether you get any sense that the president does understand the black community, does understand something which strikes us here, because we have a little of it ourselves, inequality on a massive scale in America. That's what this is all about, is it not? And the racial divide in America reflects the inequality. This president doesn't get anything but himself. And Mr. Denard is putting on a show for this president, hoping you'll see him ranting and raving about absolutely nothing. The, the bottom line is this president has done very little. You know, signing one bill does not show that a president actually cares and understands the, uh, the struggles of others and what others are going through. That's why uh, the protests have, have spread across the entire country, because the hurt that is being felt after three years of this president is finally, uh, it, it's finally kind of exploding. Um, but what I want to note, though, is look at the race of the protesters. We have basically young people of all races, um, of all colors uh, out there, uh, of all faiths out there, uh, who are recognizing the inequality. And again, uh, that this president's message of constant uh, of, of hate uh, and otherism is finally reaching a, a boiling point here. Um, so no, this president doesn't understand. This president has never understood. Uh, this president has demeaned uh, protesters. She has demeaned. Uh, lots of individuals. He, he, he's blaming uh, everybody but himself for something that really he owns. Right. 100%.
Uh, Mr. Denard, let me just ask you a, a key question. What is the way out of this? The way out of it is to not spread lies like your guest is doing. The way out of it is to have fair and balanced reporting like your, your, your journalists did not do. The way out of this is to come together, to find solutions, to find action. One of the ways to do that is to support the black owned businesses to stop bailing out these Antifa uh, lawless people that are, that are rioters. The peaceful protest is something that Americans take hold dear. St. John stayed open, St. John's Episcopal Church stayed open during the March on Washington after people said, the government said that the black people couldn't peacefully protest, it'd be riots. St. John's stayed open. St. John's was closed because of COVID-19. Barry Stenard, thank you very much. I'm today. sorry that we must it's leave it there, but I'm George grateful Ford. to you That's indeed for your contribution. About. And Roy Austin, thank you very much. I'm sorry it was a little more um, robust than perhaps we'd all prepared for. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, you Thank better you be both. prepared because this is a Thank serious you. issue. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.